How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you're watching Nature here and now. So I finally got to set up a light trap in an upland park in Pennsylvania. Spending the night, I got to keep the light set up for hours, and I was so not disappointed. The insects were bountiful and the moths were by far the dominant species. Every surface was just covered in them. Some of which were new to me, like this arched hooktip moth. White seemed to be a popular color, but brown was, should I say, more popular. I couldn't predict what I would see next, like a hidden skull on this underwing, or a moth that was adorned in black and green and even purple. This white dotted prominence stood out on the white sheet, but easily disappears when it lands in the leaf litter. Another underling, although this one dwarfed the other moths. This Tatana looks so much like a hollow branch when viewed at the right angle, especially in daylight. You'll see more of this one in another video. While I was attempting to photograph that underwing, something huge landed on my head. I didn't catch that on film, but it was this Luna Moth. He continued his flybys, which reminded me so much of my kite flying days. Tell me this magnificent animal wouldn't inspire a beautiful kite design. An hour later, and the sheet was teeming with life. The tree trunks had no shortage of visitors either. Even dozens of feet from the lights, the drama of life unfolded as ants disassembled the carcass of a dead shield bug. Back at the lights, an old favorite of mine, the clemming moths, definitely made their appearance too. They happen to be members of the tiger moth subfamily. Another giant, although modest in size when compared to the Luna, was this blinded sphinx. If you want to know why they get that namesake, check out my video all about this gem. Here's the link. I was also graced by the company of a female fish fly, although it was a four-inch male that disapproved of my pestering. Those jaws are no joke, let me tell you. I don't see them too often, but Hebrew moths are always a happy find. And so are these long-necked seed bugs. I saw several rosy maple moths, but this one was strangely faded. Am I the only one who sees a sloth face, or maybe a turtle's face on this moth? There was so much to take in and admire. Another favorite sight are these painted lichen moths. They never get old to me. Yep, an apillion eating an apillion. It happens. This one has to be my favorite though. A red winged lichen moth. It's a lifer for me and I am in love. I have a thing for red and black, if you don't already know.
So, yeah. I mean, talk about an amazing assortment of variety and diversity, right? I mean, there's just so many shapes, sizes, and colors being represented, you'd really never know what to expect. I can only imagine what type of diversity and variety I will see when I do a similar thing, say, three or four weeks from now. You got to keep in mind that the adult stage of many insects, and especially moths, is very short-lived. So a month later, the diversity is going to be completely different. There will be different species represented just a few weeks later. And uh, so it's an ever-going, non-stop adventure to see what's next. And it's a lot of fun. I hope you share a lot of the intrigue and wonder and inspiration that I feel when I look at these amazing animals. <laughs> it's just so fun. And I want to thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.